So it's a pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Boris Kudrukpa, uh, who will speak to us about second-order PDEs, conformal structure on solutions, and dispersionless integrability. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for organizing us uh, um, for uh, invitation and making this event possible. Uh, so I will be um, talking about some geometries underlying integrability. Uh, so let me see. Yeah, so that's the title. So let's start. So um, I'll start with uh, a bit of jet formalism. Um, so uh, uh, let JLM be a bundle whose points are L jets jet of functions. And I'll try to do to start slowly. So uh, when um, well, when you think about uh, L jet, you can just think about truncated uh, Taylor series up to including L uh, derivatives. Okay, so for the purpose of this talk, you can think of U to be just scalar valued in here, but uh, there's generalizations. If we do choice of coordinates um, uh, on M, then we get coordinates on tangent bundles. So basically think about precisely tail, tail decomposition and the coefficients. Okay, and alpha as route will be multi-index um, and the length, the, the, the order of the derivative involved is up to L. Okay, then we have truncation, forgetting about order, for example, from L to L minus one, and that's projection. What is more important, that it's actually a fine, uh, uh, that, 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 that's a fine bundle, okay? And the, um, the fibers are fine spaces uh, associated to vector spaces S L T star M. So that's natural identification, okay? And in particular, when L is equal to two, then we talk about quadrix. And this simple observation that kind of uh, on the level of calculus too is uh, very important because as we know from linear algebra, quadrix are nice and we have um, normal forms for them. While for example, if you talk about cubics, they are already more complicated and in general dimension, uh, they are moduli and uh, the, the, the normal forms are complicated. Uh, not talking about high degree. And that's why second order is in the title. And then why actually second order equations are so, maybe so fundamental. So um, for example, Gromo formulates sometimes about um, uh, unusual effectiveness of physics. Uh, and because like in, co uh, in core, there's lots of second order equations. Okay, I, I'll be relating this to integrability. So, um, a nonlinear differential operator of order L is just a functional gel space. So if you like linear operators and you, you, you take function, which is a linear in fiber. Sometimes it's convenient just to uh, uh, consider this as function on infinite jets if you don't want to specify precise uh, order of jet and you can do it due to the projection. So infinite jet projects to finite jet and the functions are included. So this F of order L defines PD system of order L. So, so for now, think about one equation. Okay, so there's just hypersurface in here, and then we do prolongations. So we do uh, total derivatives applied to this, or first, or second, or then, and so forth. So, so including all differential corollaries, we get infinite prolongations that submanifolds in infinite jets. Okay, now if you take this function F, and we take usual derivative, so that's fine function on finite dimensional manifold JLM. We take usual derivative of it, right? So it's not horizontal derivative as Avent was talking yesterday. So when you do DF, so order uh, of function doesn't grow. It's still um, uh, one form on L on L jets. I wrote infinity here by pulling back, but you can think about L jet. But then you restrict to the fiber of this projection, okay? So that we, which is a, a fine space associated to this. Okay. And then, uh, well, if you think about this as, as vector space, you get homogeneous polynomials of degree L. Okay, as this will be homogeneous polynomials uh, on uh, cotangent space, well, pulled back uh, to, 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 to jet space. And this is called symbol. So here's a formula. So the symbol of F is, uh, is the following. So we take uh, just top derivatives and here symmetric multivectors. Okay, so oh, these are coefficients, and uh, these are sections of this bundle of note uh, symmetric vectors, right? SLTM here. Mm -hmm. They're polynomials on T star. Of course, you can change F uh, by multiplying by a non zero function, and therefore the sigma F actually by equations canonically define only conformal class. Okay, so that's the important point for what follows. 
it takes a solution of differential equation, then uh, it, convenient, it will be convenient to identify the base manifold M with uh, image of uh, jet section. Okay, so you define the jet section of the jet bundle, okay, and they can embed M through this. So it will be submanifold in this infinite jet bundle, which is diffeomorphic to M by, by projection. However, this trick allows to bypass a lot of jet machinery, so we can actually work in, through local geometry. In particular, the restrict symbol to MU, so we will get symmetric L uh, vector on MU. Okay, so that's this thing. A characteristic variety is zero locus of the symbol. Okay, so we take covectors actually from projectivized cotangent bundle and substitute L such things into symbol, right equal to zero. That's uh, we get projective variety called characteristic variety. Sometimes considered only complex, sometimes real. Um, so for our purpose, it will be uh, convenient actually to specify signatures, but uh, for simplicity, you can think complex. So in coordinates to compute characteristic variety, you do the following. You do kind of Fourier transform. You change derivations to multiplications, okay? So just formally substitute del i into pi, okay? And so you get, instead of this um, differential, lean differential operator for the L, you get polynomial. So p are coordinates on cotangent space, okay? And p power alpha is multi, multi, um, multi power for multi-index alpha. If you have second or differential operator, then the above thing specifies follows. So here's a symbol. We have to be a bit careful. So here's summation i less or equals than j. So if you'd like to get a matrix of this, okay, you write it like this, but then all the diagonal entries have to be split uh, into two. So you have to divide by two, okay? So, um, so we have a matrix and um, uh, the, the most important thing is to, to say when this is non-degenerate. So, so we have, of course, uh, uh, the uh, characteristic variety is a field of quadrics. We would like this, this quadric to be non-degenerate. This means that the matrix of this quadratic form has to have non-zero determinant. Then we can invert it, okay? And then we have, uh, can have uh, uh, symmetric to form. Okay, so, so we have symmetric bilinear form or in other words, conformal structure. So this is defined on every solution. Um, and that's a basic to geometric approach to integrability. So let me uh, give interpretation to non-degeneracy condition above. So if I freeze one jet of U, okay, I'm talking now about uh, uh, second order uh, operator F. Uh, so I freeze one jet of U, so F depends only on second jets now, on second derivatives. And so this relation between second derivatives determines a hypersurface, which I denote epsilon prime. Epsilon is the original equation. Epsilon prime is for this trick with freezing. Um, hypersurface in Lagrangian Grassmannian. Uh, Lagrangian Grassmannian uh, locally, of course, uh, has a fine chart uh, where coordinates are uh, uh, symmetric matrices. And we can identify this Hessian matrix of U, U i j. So that's precisely second derivatives, okay? And for every point um, of this hypersurface, we can um, identify it, uh, we can identify tangent bundle to Lagrangian Grassmannian so this quadric uh, on L star, right? So the point is L, so, so then uh, the, uh, the tangent to Lagrangian can identify it with uh, uh, space of quadrics on L, okay? And this will be denoted uh, the coordinates V i j. So uh, then um, uh, this uh, space has two uh, ingredients. So first of all, tangent to, to Lagrangian Grassmannian has a Veronese cone. Namely, that's space of symmetric matrices of rank one. Okay, you can uh, parameterize them by covector P is just P square. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, uh, it also has a uh, tangent to uh, this hypersurface. So how it's given? It's given through linearization. So if you have equation f equal to ep, uh, zero for uh, hypersurface epsilon uh, prime, then you do uh, this thing and uh, you get linearization of, of the equation. Now in these terms, non-degenerate equations means that tangents to E prime is not tangential to Veronese cone. In fact, we can uh, even write what, what the kernel is. So, so, so uh, the tangent to Veronese cone 
at the point P, which is non-zero, is P symmetric product with L star. And then here's our quadratic form, uh, which we saw above as a symbol. And uh, then on L star, it has this, the following kernel. So all covectors such that tangential to Veronese cone is inside um, uh, tangent to have to be prime, TL prime. Okay, uh, so um, I would like to say about integrability. So dispersion as less pair uh, is um, uh, a bundle, first of all, rank one bundle over our original um, uh, base M, well, actually, over solution, right? So solution is um, D dimensional manifold. So this has dimension D plus one. Um, and uh, uh, so fibers are connected curves, uh, usually considered rational, but in principle can be, can be any. And on this uh, uh, total space, which is correspond called correspondence space, there is rank to distribution such that, so at every point of the uh, correspondence space, the value of the distribution depends on, on finite jet of solution. That's kind of locality of flux pair. Then distribution has to be transversal to fiber of the projection. And there shall be Frobenius integrability. So on the top, actually distribution is Frobenius integrable modular the equation. So the U is involved in here. So when you write Frobenius integrability condition, uh, uh, there will be constraint. And this constraint has to be actually equivalent to equation. Some people say just it holds, uh, uh, holds due to equation, but in fact, non-degeneracy condition, we formulate carefully with, with, with David Calderon, has, has, has to mean that it's actually equivalent. So now we have a twist of vibration. So here is the space we started with, that's actually our solution. Then there's um, a rank one bundle. So the, 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 that's a, a fibers curve. So this has dimension D plus one. But here is integrable distribution. Therefore, this space is foliated uh, by, by surfaces, right? Because it's rank two distribution. And we can consider local quotient. So this thing is just local quotient and you lose two dimensions. This is called twister space. Okay, if you push forward this uh, uh, rank two distribution here, so we'll get something in here, um, but it will not be a distribution, right? So at every point there, there will be uh, one parametric family of two planes. So that's called two plane congruence. And the uh, parameter which parameterizes this, it, it's coordinate fiber in here. Uh, it's called spectral parameter in variable systems. Okay, so our first statement is the following. So dispersionless lux pair p hat is characteristic for the equation E if for every solution and every point on corresponding space. Sorry. Um, yeah, so, 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 so dispersionless lux pair is characteristic. That, that's the statement. This means the following. So for every solution, for every point on corresponding space, and for every covector which annihilates uh, this plane below projection of pi hat, uh, the symbol annihilates theta. Equivalently, theta belongs to characteristic variety. Okay, so that's very general theorem. There's no restrictions. So the only thing we want that this will be dispersion lux pair. There's no restriction on um, order of the equation. It need not to be second order. Need not to be scalar. So that's actually a very general statement. Okay, here and, uh, I'm not going to prove it uh, or give any ideas, but let me do implications. I do implications just for the case of scalar second order ODEs. In the case when this thing is quadric, right? So when, when sigma f is quadratic form, characteristic variety is quadric. So what does it mean then? So pi then is to be coisotropic to plane for the conformal structure CF. And that's pretty strong uh, 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 implication because such to plane can only exist in dimensions from two to four. Okay, so in dimension five, coisotropic plane cannot exist. Uh, so, and uh, this explains why there's no high dimensional uh, non degenerate integrable systems uh, for, from this person's viewpoint. Okay, for d equal to two, actually, coisotropic condition is completely vacuous. 
for decal, and, and therefore it's not very much interesting to consider uh, well, dispersion stirability in these dimensions. There are still something to consider, but most interesting dimensions are three and four. For in dimension three, it means that quasi-tropic plane, and, uh, it, it, what is this? This is just null plane. It means it is a plane which attention to null cone of the metric. And for this, for, for convenience, we assume that the uh, uh, signature is um, uh, Laurentian, right? Because there shall be null cone. Uh, uh, alternative is to consider everything complex. For d equal to four, we assume signature to be neutral. And then uh, uh, the uh, null planes form a uh, union of two rational curves. So it's 2p1, the, the, the null plane for the 2-2 two, two, um, metric uh, is union of so-called alpha planes and beta planes. Okay, and so these quasi-tropic planes have to be one of those. Okay, uh, so uh, usually, we, uh, we, so, so what does this theorem tells us actually? It tells them the following. So uh, whenever you, um, you have your um, equation and then symbol tells you what is um, uh, uh, conformal structure for the equation and therefore you know how Lux pair has to look actually at the bottom, projection of it. So you actually get two plane congruence because it has to be just null planes. Well, you have to choose alpha or beta for the moment. So, so there's some choice, but it's just discrete choice. Then you have to consider lifting, right? And the lift has to be as, as follows. As X is just some lambda dependent vector field. Y is lambda dependent vector field. And del lambda is a vector in, in the fiber direction. So M and N are unknown functions. So, and then you lift from the Frobenius integrability conditions this. And then the lift distribution has to be integrable mod epsilon on shell, but actually not identically. So if you don't uh, turn off equations and off shell, it's not um, in integrable. Okay, I will discuss implication for this in, direct, in, in dimension four and also three. But first let me give some example in dimension three. So in dimension three, the background geometry is unsigned well. So I briefly recall. So it means that you have to have conformal structure, one form omega and torsion free linear connection D that satisfy for some function lambda the following equations. The first equation tells just that the, the connection D is while, which means it preserves conformal structure. And this means that it so if you apply D to, uh, to metric G, to metric representative conformal structure G, you get something proportional to G. And the coefficient of proportionality is omega. Okay, so you don't need three ingredients, G, omega, and D. You can have actually two, and from this equation, you can recover the, the rest. But then uh, the Einstein condition is the following. So you take um, a Ricci um, um, tensor of connection D, um, you symmetrize it, and it has to be in, in the conformal class of G. Okay, so lambda plays no special role here. Uh, so whenever, basically you just eliminate from this equation to write the equations. Okay, so here is an example. Uh, Einstein while um, uh, structures from uh, dispersionless kind of Sophie-Triashvili equations. So here's a DKP equation, right? It's 3D, so three unknowns, TXY, uh, one dependent variable U, three independent, one dependent variable. Now, Einstein while structure on solutions and the uh, dispersionless lux pair pi hat uh, are given as follows. So, so here coordinates are x, y, t, that's base, right? That's, that's the, the solution parameterized by x, y, and t and lambda spectral parameter. So m hat is actually has these four coordinates. So the metric uh, representative is this one. You see function u enters only here and covector omega is this one. And then you can check uh, that these conditions are satisfied. Alternatively, so here's dispersional slugs pair. Uh, so you see that that's actually uh, a distribution on, on M hat. If you write from Benius integrability condition, it actually will imply DKP equation. So when you have this uh, uh, from Benius integrable uh, equation upstairs, so you get rank uh, uh, to distribution, which is integrable, therefore you have foliation. And uh, the, uh, the, the fibers uh, are surfaces and you have uh, two parametric family of those. If you project them down to M, M is three dimensional. So in M, you will have two parametric family of surfaces. And with respect to G, they're going to be null and totally geodesics. That's Cartan, another characterization of Einstein-Weil structures. The, the, the difference with 
kind of Cartan context is that actually here we have abundance of those for every solution U of this equation. Okay, and this equation is integrable, uh, for example, in hydrodynamic sense, and therefore we have a, a lot of solution parameterized by solution of Gibbon set of system, and each gives Einstein well structure. Okay, if you go to 4D, then the key invariant of conformal structure is well tensor. It splits into self dual and anti self dual parts, well, in uh, signature 2 2, right? Um, so, so there's a formula. Star is Hodge uh, operator, right? Sometimes it's convenient to write it uh, uh, for two two tensor. I, I wrote it for uh, for three one tensor because in this form omega uh, w is invariant. Uh, and um, well, you can see here this uh, epsilon tensor, right? Uh, so uh, square root of determinant g times epsilon tensor is volume, and uh, this you can change. That volume uh, gives you orientation. So if you change volume, you basically multiply star by minus. And then W plus minus uh, uh, will be mapped to W minus plus. Okay, so self dual and alto self dual change your role. So locally, of course, uh, th there's no big difference. So you don't see the difference between self dual and anti self dual. That's why sometimes you can talk about half flat. But when you do computation, so basically what you see, you see square root of determinant, right? That's, that's your freedom. That's, that's how you, you're going to extract that. That's your plus or minus. Okay, for second uh, Plibansky equations, here it is. Uh, that's equation in 4D, where you have four uh, independent variables. Um, then uh, you have the uh, conformal structure determined by the algorithm which, which I described above. So, so here's a metric representative. And um, this metric, uh, uh, this conformal structure is self dual Okay, this proper choice of orientation. Alternatively, you can have the, the dispersion slugs pair. Here it is. Uh, you see it uh, actually looks like um, uh, distribution on original manifold M, right, on this four-dimensional, but this parameter lambda. So there's no del lambda here involved, but still lambda here is coordinate. So it's actually distribution on five manifold, not four, on corresponding space. There, it gives you um, uh, foliation uh, by uh, surfaces, right? Uh, now it's surfaces in five space, so you have three-dimensional family of surfaces, project down to M, you get three-dimensional family of null surfaces, totally geodesic. So it's actually, again, an, another characterization of cell duality now due to Penrose. So the difference between these two examples is the following. So this equation is actually Monge pair type. And uh, this dispersion slugs pair, uh, you see it, it doesn't contain differentiation by lambda. There's no del lambda. With DKP, it's opposite, you see explicitly there's the lambda. And that's not particular choice of coordinates. You cannot actually get rid of this. And uh, this equation, well, as it stays in, in, in high derivatives, right? It's actually uh, quasi-linear in high derivative, but, but, but it's not quasi-linear equation. So if you, if, you, if you look to this as ux square, and you can potentiate to make it uh, uh, can contain only second order, there's way to rewrite it to, to contain only second derivatives. So it's, it's it's um, will contain u x x square, so it's not monchian pair type. I, I will talk about monchian pair uh, in the next slides. So here's two theorems on integrability um, that um, uh, that we obtained with, with with my colleagues. So basically, like these two examples which I discussed before, they were known already for for, for decades. Uh, but we've been interested in the question: um, what is generality? How, how much we can go from examples actually to general theory? Okay, so here's two general statements about uh, integrability. So one is integrability through the method of hydrodynamic reductions. I don't describe what it is. I, I just discussed this in, in lecture series in Greek uh, several months ago. But basically, it's certain algorithm of how to produce some explicit uh, solutions. Okay, there's another uh, integrability through dispersion and slugs pair. Okay, and um, uh, both statements say that integrability is equivalent to integrable background geometry, which in 3D means Einstein while, in 4D means self dual. And this property has to hold on any solution. So, this property for conformal structure, which depends on solution. And so, if this holds <coughs> for any solution, then we recover integrability. There's a bit different degree of generality in this statement. So in the, in the theorem, with, uh, um, 
a Jennifer Apontov. So we talk about the heritability by the method of hydrodynamic reductions. So this applied to certain classes of differential equations. So we, we explicitly describe, I, I don't talk about it in formulation to make it simpler. But uh, for instance, this method of hydrodynamic reductions um, requires that equations translation local invariance. So that's special constraint on, on the equations. So it's not applicable to any equations. Uh, this is sufficiently general. That's a very general statement here for, 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 for equivalence of DLP and integral background geometry. <coughs> okay, so now um, I'd like to talk about Monjan pair property. So Monjan pair equations are mm, very nice class. They have lots of applications. Uh, this has very special second order PDEs <coughs> that are obtained as follows. You take your function U, you compute its uh, matrix of second derivative, Hessian, right? Is D times D matrix, D is a number of independent variables. And then you can take all possible minors of size D, of size D minus one, up to size one, and even up to size zero. Okay, and you take linear combinations of those with actually coefficients depending on first jets. Okay, so second jets come only through determinants. So second jets come polynomially and the highest degree is actually D. Okay, but that's actually even more constrained. Okay, I'd like to say something about this. So I'd like to characterize those Monchon per equations. Okay, and <clears throat> I'll give first a uh, geometric interpretation of this similar to interpretation of non-degeneracy. So I do again the same trick, I freeze one jet. So, um, because I would like to see the dependence on second derivatives only, right? Because that determines one jumper property. So it doesn't matter. So I just do it for simplicity of formulation. Okay, then I can express one uh, uh, jet variable through the rest. For example, okay, D equal, take D to be equal to M plus one. Okay, so I express the first using zero through the rest. Okay, and then uh, I'll formulate the criterion for equation to be mon pair. So actually such criterion we are known um, in certain cases of, of low dimension before. And in the work with uh, Eugene Ferropontov and Vladimir Novikov, we, we got the general criterion. So here is a formulation. So uh, the equation of this form is of mon pair type, if and only if whenever we consider um, so, so note that this thing actually is relation again between uh, second order derivatives, and you can think of those, of course, as coordinate in Lagrangian Grassmannian. So, what does this gives to you? It gives you hypersurface in Lagrangian Grassmannian. Mm -hmm. So, our equation uh, is embedded uh, into, into lambda, this Lagrangian Grassmannian. And then lambda by Plucker is embedded into certain projective space. Okay, so that's Plucker embedding. Uh, that's actually the dimension of the embedding, uh, it's it given by funny formula. And here's our equation. Well, I have to use prime, right? Because I froze on the fine jet, but uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's, that's hypersurface here. Epsilon is lambda hypersurface, lambda in projective space, very big co-dimension. Okay, the state, uh, so, so uh, just from projective geometry, so lambda inside projective space have a bunch of second fundamental forms. Okay, projective second fundamental forms. Uh, now, um, the equation is one jumper type if and only if uh, the uh, second symmetric derivative of f is linear combination of those second fundamental forms. Okay, so that's, that's the statement. Uh, and it, that's of course possible to write a system of PDEs. It's going, all of this PD is going to be of second order. There will be quite a lot of them, that's, that's the number. And what is a surprise here actually is that that, that will be involutive system. That, that, that doesn't follow a priori. So as the uh, outcome is that Monjan pair property is characterized by an involutive second order PDEs. Okay, it doesn't matter uh, what the number of variable is, that's uh, always second order. And actually um, it depends only on um, the number of derivations by UIJ uh, at most four different uh, indices involved. Okay, so we, we need this characterization. It's certain system, I don't uh, don't try, it's possible to, to uh, actually to squeeze it into uh, one slide, but uh, I, I spare it. Okay, it has some implication. 
So first consider Hirota type PDEs. So that's precisely those second order PDEs where you see only second derivatives. So this you don't need this trick of freezing first uh, first jet. So so it is translation invariant. There's no independent variables. There's also translations with respect to uh, u, um, but also it doesn't depend on on first derivatives of u. Okay. So and previously we proved uh, with Ferapontov and Novikov that integrability implies a Monge pair property. Okay. So that's actually. Um, uh, quite a computation because we, we, we took a tribility in high dynamic sense, which is and which is also equivalent to dispersional integrability. And that's actually quite a bit of computation, um, which we, we used essentially in computers. So we converted hydrodynamic integrability into a huge system um, and then uh, verified that it implies more jumper property and back. Okay. And at the current stage, there's, we don't see any way to, to bypass computer with this. So it's like four colors here, a big computation. It's, um, it's, it's rigorous. It works only with rational numbers. So it can be verified on any other device, but however, it's, it's still uh, not pure human computation. Okay, uh, what good about this? As good about this is that actually Hirota type Monjaper equations are not that many. So, so, so uh, uh, if you put integrability properties, then actually there's just few of them. They were completely classified by Dubrov Ferapontov in 2010. So, over C, the classification is very short. It contains one linear uh, PD. Well, remember non degeneracy assumption. So, it, so we can say wave, but in the 2 2 signature, it's ultra wave. Okay. And there are five versions of Lubanski equation. You already saw the second Lubanski equation. Uh, there is also first Lubanski equation, modified Lubanski equation, Hussein equation, and one which was called uh, by Dubrov uh, and Therapont of heavenly, general heavenly equation. So here it is. So that's a relation of that kind. Uh, alpha, beta, gamma are uh, um, three numbers which sum to zero. Okay, and of course you can also multiply them by the same, right? So it's only one parameter essentially. So you see it is P1 inside P2. That's the same space of parameters which parameterize those equations. All other Lubanski equations from the list, from the list, they don't have any parameter, but this one has. Okay, it's called general chemical equations. It turns out uh, it was also known before to Konopelchenko and Schiff. But the names that Dubrov and Ferrapont of coin it survived. <clears throat> okay, so uh, 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 okay, so uh, for this equation, uh, you can you can have high dynamic test. You can write DLP, and there's uh, easy to to, to to write it from this characteristic condition. Okay, so um, so it turns out that uh, um, the, this conclusion is actually true for general. Okay, for general translation non-invariant PDEs, we cannot talk about dynamic integrability. So, so nobody knows so far how to do it. So, uh, and uh, people are interested in general uh, uh, PDEs, how to do integrability, but this dynamic integrability is out of reach for the moment. But dispersion slug pair actually has perfect sense for whatever. And the conclusion is more or less the same. So every non-degenerate equation of, sec of second order uh, such that uh, uh, conformal structure is half flat on every solution. That's equivalent to existence of dispersionless lux pair. This has to be of Monge pair type. Okay, so it doesn't matter um, whether uh, Hirota type or not Hirota type, that's a general statement. Even more, even stronger, if you freeze one jet on a solution, then actually PD can be brought to one of the Plibansky type uh, heavenly equations. Okay, however, now for translation only value for general classifications out of reach at the moment. So let me give an example uh, how we do uh, deformation from, from translation invariance. Okay, so, so there's several, several ways to produce it, but basically the idea is the following. You take some, some integrable equation, for, that's, that's, uh, that's the idea of deformation, and you introduce some functional parameter. Okay, and then you uh, impose the well, okay, for so 4D is a self duality condition on this. You write uh, the, the conformal structure is computed algorithmically, you compute wild tensor, and you put half flatness condition. 
and basically when you deform that, you know which half shall vanish. Okay, and and this gives you PD system uh, on this uh, functional perturbation parameter, and which which you solve. It's a strong Gilbert on it. Okay, so here's an example. So we put one function. Well, one can put more, but but for this example, we put just one fun arbitrary function of first jets. So x are all four variables. U is scalar. Well, u x are four derivatives. So the and if f is equal to one, that's no one equation. It's called Plibansky equation. First, first Plibansky equation. Okay, I cannot take f equal to zero because if I take f equal to zero, it's going to be degenerate. Remember the non-degeneracy condition for symbol. Okay, but for, for f non-zero, it's non-degenerate. It's fine. So I can compute conformal structure. Here it is. Uh, it actually doesn't contain f. That's actually the reason I, I choose this equation, for example, not general heavenly, because for general heavenly G uh, is a bit uh, more complicated to write. Okay. Um, the determinant of this G is F square over 16. So we have to take square root, okay, to compute uh, the Hodge star. And that's a choice you see here. So I, I choose plus F of O4. Okay, so that's my choice, which will tell me SD or uh, self dual of I and self dual. Actually, at this point, I maybe no, don't know what, what to choose. Okay, so I have to explore both. Okay, so I take, for example, W plus equal to zero, some number of constraints, huge PDE system, very much of return. It. it doesn't give me anything, just F equal to zero, which is unacceptable, right? Because this equation is degenerate. Okay, I try another one, W minus equal to zero. And then I get some PDE system, which is consistent. We can completely solve it. There's huge uh, solution space. However, there's also equivalence group. I don't want to show you unessential parameters. I quotient the result by this equivalence group. Okay, and then I get just some finite number of, of cases. Of course, F equal to one is there. The first Plimansky equation is still there, but there are also some cases which are translation non-invariant. That's one of the most general strata. So for this F, the equation will be also integrable, right? And you see this contains um, independent variables y and t. And then we can compute the dispersional slug pair. Here it is, x hat and y hat. This gives rank to distribution of the correspondence space. Okay, so since since this is still mon pair, even with this perturbation, you see there's no d by d lambda actually. So so uh, so that's uh, as, as was predicted. And um, okay, so that's that's an uh, integrable deformation. So we get uh, actually not functional family. Well, there was functional family, but equivalence group removed it. So sometimes we get some 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 number of uh, actually uh, scalar parameters. Uh, it can be multidimensional, but um, nobody saw actually functional uh, uh, essential functional parameters in integrable systems. So, well, like Jennifer point of says there can't be, but there's no general theorem about it. Uh, now I'd like to, to note something here. So, so if you look to this right, so equation, so here all second derivatives. Uh, so here's first derivatives ux, uz, but there's no x and z in, involved in the equation. There's y and t, but there's no uy and ut. So actually it's possible to do contract transformation which, uh, for, for the, for, uh, which maps this equation to different equation, quantum equivalent indeed, but which uh, makes a translational invariant. Namely, interchange y and uy, t and ut, so called partial Legendre transformation. Don't touch x, z, ux, uz. Okay, there will be induced transformation on u with this. Okay, so that it is contact. And then it's actually going to be a uh, translational invariant. Uh, so that kind of question is, can you do something which is essentially translational non-invariant, so not subject to hydrodynamic reduction? And the answer is yes. So, so of course, there can be integrable equations which are essentially translational non-invariant. So if equations translational invariant, but of course you can do some transformations, you don't see it immediately, what does it mean? It means that it actually uh, has a subalgebra in the algebra of contact symmetries, which is abelian. And uh, actually the vector fields are independent. So it has like rank two, uh, rank D commutative subalgebra of contact symmetries. Mm -hmm. So not dimension, but, but rank, so that actually the vectors at every point are independent. Okay, uh, and um, here's a proposition. There exists non-degenerate terrible PD system of dimension three and four. 
that are not contact equivalent to the any translation invariant equation. Okay, example for d equal to three, it's from the uh, work joined with Andrei Panasiuk. So here's Veronese web equation. Actually, it's not Veronese web equation. Veronese web equation is the following. So you take the first parentheses, write one constant, here you write second constant, and here you write third constant, and sum of constants have to be equal to zero. That's Veronese web equation. What we did with Panasiuk, we made integrable deformation. So it's actually was functional parameter, and that's one of the example. You also see that this uh, uh, parentheses is sum to zero, but now it's functions. Now, this PD, uh, the, uh, for this PD, the contact symmetry algebra is as follows. So it's arbitrary diffeomorphisms of U line, or, or, uh, so U can go to any function of U. And there's also two uh, dimensional uh, algebra, sol2, solvable two dimensional algebra of symmetries in addition to this. Okay, as direct sum, as you see, uh, this one, rank one, so it, it contains maximal one dimensional abelian. And in sol2 is also maximal one dimensional abelian. So there's simply is no three dimensional abelian also algebra. Okay, it's possible also to, to create such thing for d equal to four, but not in higher dimensions. Okay, and actually in higher dimensions, just simply impossible to have non-degenerate integrable PDs as, as a corollary from, uh, from joint uh, uh, theorem with David Halderbank. Okay, so uh, a remark about higher dimensions. So attempt to generalize to, to higher dimensions uh, fail by immediate obstacles, like all known multidimensional PDs. Uh, so they, they, they have dispersional slug pairs, but they degenerate. That's, that's, uh, that, that, that didn't have explanation actually before I work with, with David. So now, now it has universal explanation. But here are examples. So this uh, PD uh, is in 6D. Uh, this uh, kind of generalization of heavenly equation due to Saki, Takasaki and Chernovsky. That's integral has dispersion slug pair, but it is uh, so it's corresponding conformal um, bio symmetric biovector has rank four. Conopelchin can shift another generalization to dimension eight, so that's uh, a PD in dimension eight. So uh, corresponding co uh, symbol has rank four again. Four is maximal. Okay, that's because, because of course, the tropic property. Okay, and here's a general theorem. Uh, so if you have integrability of rank four second to the PDs in any dimension, higher than four, uh, with a non-trivial dispersional slug pair, then the equation must be of much impaired type. Okay, so that's what concerns uh, dimensions four, which is well understood, and higher dimensions, that's uh, a bit better understood now due to this theory. Dimension three is quite different. So I have to stop <coughs> in about a minute. So I just uh, say a couple of words. So first of all, <coughs> in dimension three, the lifting is more complicated. So pre in dimension four, it's very algebraic. In dimension three, to, 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 to raise to two plane congruence to dispersional slug pair, you need a connection, so-called wild connection. But otherwise, it's completely algebraic. And that's in, um, in contrast to what happens to solitonic or, or dis dispersive equations. For dispersive equations, computing lux pairs, you have to do integrations, you have to solve PDEs. So here's a completely algebraic procedure. So that's just simply formula, okay? And second thing, kind of generic integrable equations in 3D are not of much impaired type. You already saw it in, in example of DKP, it was not of much impaired type, but actually the general, sorry, statement uh, like for Hirota type, for example, was resolved by Ferropontov that the gen general integral equation is a modular form. So it's actually transcendental, very far from algebraic. Okay, so here we have to do opposite, not to consider mon mon pair, but consider non monge pair equations. So monge pairs are rather special cases. Okay, and there's also some results about it, but I uh, have to stop here. So let me just uh, I show some references and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thanks, Boris. Any questions for Boris? So in, in which uh, dimensions are there complete classifications for the Monja pair case? Well, Monja pair in 3D for Hirota type, they are just linear, have to be just linear, not interesting. In 4D, classification over C uh, has to be elaborated uh, over R, but that's not difficult. Dubrov, Ferrapontov. 
Uh, there are some results in higher dimensions, uh, but rather for systems like system of first order, which kind of roughly e equivalent to scalar second order, but this is not done. Uh, so yes, so, so Monge pair systems in uh, have been classified, but Monge pair equations not of Hirota type. For non Hirota type, kind of enormously difficult. In any dimension, maybe in dimension three will be possible, but yeah. Let's thank Boris again. Yes.